let's talk about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. All three things that you should know how to use, when to use, without even thinking about it. Let's take an example of everyone's favorite coffee. Shutter speed. ISO. We are still missing something. Aperture. Now all three things, much better experience, all three things complement each other perfectly. So the first lesson is camera basics. That coffee example who don't understand that shutter speed, ISO, aperture all complement each other. You can't use one without using other. You need three of them. For any photography like food, sport, fashion, whatever, you have to use these things in different manner. So let's talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed decides the motion of the photo. Is it should be in the freeze action or in the blurred moment? But the both things have their own advantages. Let's take an example of a man is running. If the shutter speed is low, it will show the movement and the moving things will get blurred. And if the shutter speed is high, the man will get freezed and you will get the freezed capture of a man. Shutter speed is the term for how long the shutter of a camera is open. Let's see in this waterfall picture. In the first photo we can see the shutter speed is high, it's 320th of a second. Here we can see everything is crystal and clear and sharp. In the second photograph we can see the shutter speed is low. So we can see the movement of the water. So we can see, we can use the shutter speed in a different manner. Now let's talk about aperture. Aperture is the opening for the camera sensor. If the opening is wider, the f-stop is low, and if the opening is narrow, then f-stop is high. As the aperture is wider, the amount of light goes towards the sensor is high. And if the aperture is narrow, then amount of light goes towards the sensor is low. So if you want to take a picture with a wider aperture, then you should make sure that your shutter speed should be high and the amount of light goes towards the sensor will be appropriate aperture is different for different lenses that's why we use different lenses because of the f-stop there are different lenses for fashion there are different lenses for food and uh, sports etc now if we want to take a picture of a flower then let's see how it goes here we are going to focus on the flower so if we don't want the background then we can just blur it out by decreasing the f-stop now open the your aperture all the way up now here we can see the advantage of the aperture we can show the product or food or anything more focused and more clear now you will ask why the narrow aperture means a uh, high f-stop narrow aperture is used for shooting landscapes or anywhere where you want to focus on larger side if you want me to make a video on aperture and shutter speed on the scientific and technical terms then comment down below here are some photos for wide aperture and narrow aperture now what will be the photo settings for the narrow aperture and the higher shutter speed so here is the third term named ISO which is sensitivity of a sensor which adds the fake light in the photo as the ISO gets higher the more grainy photo becomes and it decreases the quality of a photo it is commonly referred as a noisy photo now the better the camera the better they are in the low light in the better camera we can shoot on a higher iso without get grainy image now practice these things and once you will get skilled and practiced enough then you will get to know by looking the photo how much is the shutter speed and how much is the aperture and how is the ISO. Now see you in the next video.